What's up, real estate agents? If you want to find out how to absolutely explode your business with lead generation while having fun, this video is for you. In this interview, I sit down with Chasten Miles from Dallas, Texas, where he gives you the step-by-step rule book for his absolutely amazing client appreciation events that have blown up his business. He gives you the tips, tricks, and secrets so you're not going to want to miss a step, and he plays a game with them that generates more referrals than you'll ever imagine. So make sure you stay till the end where he drops that bomb. Without further ado, it's my pleasure to introduce you guys to Chasten Miles. All right, guys, what's up? We're back with another episode, and today I've got one of the youngest hustlers, man, that I am super excited to chat with. So we have Chasta Miles all the way down south from Dallas, Texas, who's going to drop some absolute knowledge bombs on how to use lead generation in terms of a creative way that some of you might not be thinking about. So Chasta, welcome, man. What's up? Hey, how are you? I'm so excited. <laughs> Good, man. Me too. It's, you know, this is a guy that if you haven't been following his YouTube channel, I'm going to link it below because he has some absolutely amazing content, does some wicked demonstrations and tutorials. So this guy's absolutely crushing it. And I know you guys are going to resonate with him because he takes real estate in a creative way and now he's living his best life. So for those who might have been living under a rock over the last couple of years, why don't you give yourself a brief introduction and, and let people know, you know, What's up, man, who you are and and how you got to this point? Yeah, so um, again, my name is Chasen J. Miles and I'm down here in Dallas, Texas. I got in real estate back in 2013 was when I was actually licensed. And then 2014 was when I actually took the license more serious. (laughs) And I want to say 2015 was when I really started working. So I had my license for a couple of a little while before I actually um, really started producing in the business. You know, I was at that place where I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to do it. I didn't know the right questions to ask. I, I mean, I was just totally lost. I had just moved to Texas from Georgia. And so I had this bright idea that I wanted to get in real estate. Little did I know how this business was built around like relationships and your network and hell, knowing the streets. I didn't even know the streets. Yeah. And so I, I, I set a, a big goal in front of me um, in a sense of me trying to pursue something that statistically I, I'm not even supposed to be successful in. Um, so I had to get my real estate license and I was just really at that place where I was trying to do any and everything to get business. You name it, I was trying it. Not only like buying leads, depleting all the little money that I had, but you know, just just trying to do everything. I remember literally sitting outside of apartment complexes trying to convert people to to buying. Like when I'm telling you this just this grimy hustler stuff, like I was I was out there doing it. And you know, over time I kind of found what really worked for me and from there, it's it's been. You know, I won't say it's been smooth sailing, but it's it, it's been a different course. And today, I have a real estate team, Founders Real Estate Group. There's um, five agents with me right now, and two admin people, and we are definitely on the growth path and out here moving and shaking. So, so that's that's me in a nutshell. <laughs> That's awesome, man. You know, I love hearing the fact that you were sitting out there and, you know, asking people to buy because, you know, a lot of people will see where you are now or they'll see any agent that's successful and think, you know, maybe it was just a walk in the park or they got lucky or they have a parent in the industry that gave them business. You know, they don't understand the hustle and grind that it took. Similar for me, you know, I was out there door knocking in the snow in minus 20. Um, but people think it's, you know, it just comes out of thin air. So I think it's amazing to put some context into the fact that, you know, you were straight up hustling those streets, man, which is amazing to hear, you know, before we get into some of the lead generation topics, we did talk off camera the other day about something kind of neat where you were doing absolutely everything. And you do have something out there that talks about the, the many different lead generation strategies, but now you've kind of honed it down 
to what you love to do. So before we get into something specific, why don't you talk about that for a bit? Because I did the exact same thing in terms of, you know, exhausting every single avenue humanly possible. And I was spreading myself so thin that I was being, you know, half-assed decent at a bunch of things. I wasn't being great at anything. Do you want to talk about that in terms of finding what works for you? Because not everything works for everybody. Right. Yeah. So um, that resource you're talking about is called yeah. Legion Playbook. And I decided to put that together of literally all the all the things that I did try. And, you know, some they were more successful than others. But I would say the top things that really made me draw into to the, the things that I do today was one, did I get anything from it? You know, was I, did I get any leads? Did I get any closed transactions? Um, did I, did, did I get anything from it? And the funny thing with like lead generation is there's so many different companies out there that can quote unquote lead generate or sell you leads, put you on Google. And, you know, you, you can make yourself look good. Like literally you can go on Google and type in whatever you need to type in to see your name on top. Or you can get on Facebook and see these ads that they're running from you. But at the end of the day, what are you closing from it? Or is there anything closing from it? So I had to make sure that that there was actually that ROI from whatever lead generation tactic I was trying. Secondly, it came down to, did I even enjoy doing that? You know, um, like, like I've publicly said, I, I never enjoyed door knocking. And so I've done it twice. It wasn't bad as far as the results go, but it wasn't like that thing like, oh yeah, I got results from this. I like this. Yeah. It was it was more so like, okay, I did it. I tried it. It works. I could tell everybody that it works, but it's just not for me. So, so I really wanted to zero in on which things I actually enjoyed. And so that way it didn't feel so much like a chore to me. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, it felt like more so like, Oh, I can't wait to do this and I'm going to get business from it. You know, that's, that's what I kind of looked for. And then lastly, I would say I, I look for things that I was actually halfway decent at, you know, um, some of these lead generation tactics, there's a steep learning curve, you know, and like, okay, for instance, one thing that's, that's, that's in my playbook is, running Facebook ads. Now I go deep into how to run Facebook ads and I show you all the steps and everything, but you know, you can show somebody that 20 times and they're still not going to understand it or, or Facebook is, is going to change again. And so you don't, you don't have just the, the bottom line Facebook philosophies to even be able to pick up where they, where they left off, you know? So that would be one thing that I would say, Hey, you're just not that good at that. You know, yeah, it may be fun. Yeah, you can get a result from it, but you're just not that, that good at that. Client appreciation events, that's that's something that we do. They, they, they get us a return, they get us referrals. We're good at them and I have fun doing them. It just fit all three of the, the criteria. So when you're kind of choosing what you wanna do lead generation wise, when you bring all those things together, it makes a huge difference because you don't necessarily feel like a slave in your business. You actually enjoy going to work and you get something out of it, you know? Yeah, man. You know, I like that you mentioned that about feeling like a chore because I actually see a lot of new agents who reach out to me before they get their license or as they're about to get licensed. And they've got this fire, this passion, this drive, and they're so excited to get in the industry. And then they meet someone, uh, you know, a coach, a mentor, whoever that tells them the only way is door knocking, prospecting, um, cold calling for hours on end. And they come in with this passion. And after a few months, they lose that. They hate going to quote unquote work every day because the lead generation strategies or the way they carry out business no longer excites them. And it just depleted all of their passion for the industry. So finding out what you love is amazing. And it's funny because it goes to show you different people like different things. I built my business on Facebook ads and door knocking because I love it. But there's certain things that I absolutely hate. And I know it works wonders for other people and I just won't do it. So client appreciation, man, this is a super exciting topic because 
I know a lot of people are curious about it, but they don't know how to properly do it or they don't know where to start. So I know you work some wonders with that, man. It's some magic. So let's get into it. Let's chat about some, uh, how you generate referrals and, and use it, these events to build and grow your business. Yeah. Um, yeah, I love client appreciation events and, and actually how it came about was it was, it was probably my third going on fourth year in the business and I had closed a good amount of business by this time. Um, and I had always read in the blogs, you know, most veteran agents, they're like, oh yeah, my business is referrals now, referrals, referrals, referrals. So it was like, that was the goal for me. I wanted more referrals and I was sitting there looking through my database because I was switching from one database to the, to the other. So when you're doing that, you have to look through every single person and, and everything. And in the new database that I was, that I was using at the time, it said, um, referral sent for each person. And, you know, I was entering in zero, 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 zero. And then it got kind of embarrassing because I entered in all of my past clients and realized that only one or two of them had sent me a, a referral. And at that moment, I was like, something has to change. You know, why, why is this? Why, why aren't I getting referrals? I know we had good transactions and I think that they liked me and, you know, all this kind of stuff. And turns out that it was me. It was, it was totally me. I, I wasn't keeping in touch. I wasn't keeping them engaged. I was just literally that agent. We close on it and then, you know, on to the next, on to the next deal. And then six months would pass, a year would pass. And, you know, I was literally that statistic where they say 90 something percent of people get a new agent because they lost contact with their old agent. Like I yeah. lost contact with all my clients. And so I knew at that moment that something had to change. Um, and I was talking to, to a buddy of mine and he was telling me all these different things you can do. He was like, oh yeah, you can do these pop buys and you can do, um, you can call them and all this kind of stuff. And, and then he mentioned client appreciation events and like, I don't know, my um, interest was, was, was sparked because I love a good party. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Uh, I love, I love a good happy hour. And, and so, um, I decided to throw a client appreciation event. Now, the first one, it wasn't the best. I mean, it was my, my first one. The second one, it got better. It got, it got a lot better. The third one was when I was like, okay, I need to probably even become an event planner at this point. Yes, but um, but that, that by, the, by the time I had that third event, and, and, and I like bragging about this, we literally pulled 38 warm referrals from that one client appreciation event. It lasted two hours and we got that many referrals. Wow. And so when I saw that happen, it kind of fit all my boxes. You know, it, it, was, it was fun. I enjoyed doing it. I was good at it by this point. And we actually had an ROI on it. And so that's when I knew that, hey, this has to become a part of my business. And I really perfected it now to the point where, I mean, we pretty much do them for free. Um, we don't really come out of pocket much and, and they give us that opportunity to stay in touch with our clients, to stay in front of them. Um, and you know, we get business from them. So client appreciation events, we do them four times a year. When I first started, I was like, yeah, we're going to do one of these every single month. <laughs> of course. <laughs> and so when I first started that first, second and third one, they were actually like pretty consecutive, like month after month after month. And then I was like, okay these are going to get stale and, you know, I want to keep the excitement high. So we started doing them, um, once a quarter and it was, it was, it was pretty fun. Um, just the whole planning of it, but it was really easy actually. And I have this down to a science and I'll give it to y'all actually today. Cause you know, I just believe in sharing value and everything. So, so, so I'll give you my exact process, like what we do, but, the biggest reasons, like I said, why we want to have these events is for one, we have to stay top of mind to your clients. Whether you have one client or 50 past clients or a hundred, like you have to stay top of mind if you want this to get easier over time. Because the moment you you disappear and you don't contact them, it's like it you have to work three times, four times harder to get them back 
versus if you just would have kept them top of mind on that schedule. Um, these events are also a great way to introduce your business to new prospects. Mm -hmm. You know, something that I always encourage people to do is bring somebody with them who's, who, who's not their spouse. I mean, of course their, their spouse and kids are, are invited, but bring a friend, bring a, bring a coworker, like everything is on us. Why not? You know, and what's of funny course. is um, people oftentimes bring coworkers because they'll leave from, from work and come to our happy hour. And so we meet a lot of coworkers um, generating leads again great great place to generate leads and then just keeping your referral partners and your past clients happy you know something happens when you have people in a room everybody's mingling smiling having drinks eating food and no matter if it was a bad transaction that you had with them or not you are resetting their memory of you mm -hmm. you know when you have this event yeah, the transaction could have went bad. It could have went south, but then they showed up to this event and they had a great time. It's like, okay, now I'm rechanneled. Now, now the last thing I remember is like having a cocktail with Chasten and his team and we had a good time and my friend loves him. And, you know, so it just, it just does a lot. These, these events are so powerful. That's awesome, man. I'm super excited to hear that. You know, one of the things that really resonates with me on that note is, you know, I find a lot of agents struggle to keep top of mind because a lot of these strategies people talk about in the old school way is, you know, 33 touch points in a year and you have to find ways to send mailers and call them and this and that. And when you've got multiple clients, that's an exhaustive time consuming effort. But if you have a, you know, a fun way to get everybody together at once, again, four times a year, you've just made probably a better impression, a less salesy impression and it was way more effective and efficient for you as well. So that's so sick, man. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I mean, even thinking about it when you're, when you're doing the 33 touches and the um, postcards and all that kind of stuff, like no matter how light you try to make them an area, you try to make them at the end of the day, it still comes off like a oh, sales yeah. tactic, you know? And, and at these events, I mean, literally these are all of our past clients. And so there's no selling that's going on. Like it's literally just having a good time, you know, but the stuff organically happens. Um, but that's, that's, that's not our mission with these. Nobody's, we're not sending out invitations with our headshots on the bottom. We're not putting business cards in the invitations. None of that type of stuff. Like it's, it's yeah, a good time. Well, yeah, I'm oh. super excited to hear your formula and also, you know, giving people an, an idea of, you know, how you get the leads from that, you know, whether it be sign up or whatever. So let's dive into that, man, because, I, you know, I need to start doing these even more, too, after I hear this strategy. Yeah, for yeah, for sure. So so with the client appreciation events, there's three steps, three basic steps to to accomplish a successful event. One of them is planning the event, obviously. Next, you want to fill the event with people. And then third is attending the actual and hosting the event. Okay. Mm -hmm. Those may sound like duh, Chasten, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to break those down into sections so you can see what goes on in each of these to, like you said, pull those referrals, get new leads and generate business and everything. All right. So let's go ahead and dive in. I have my um, notes on this next screen over here. So that's why I keep looking over here. Okay, so first, it's going to start with your initial planning. And, and this is going to be around six to eight weeks before the event is. I recommend eight, um, but six to eight weeks. If you don't start at, at least six, you, you need to push the event out a month because it's, it's, it's super crucial that you start this early. The first thing that you have to do is decide on a date and time. Um, how this works for, for me, though, is I, I do a business plan at the end of every year for the next year. So I already know each day and time that we're going to be hosting our events. But if you don't have that, go ahead and decide on a day and time. I recommend doing a Thursday um, and letting it start not like the mistake I see a lot of people make is starting their events at five. Um, but you want to go ahead and push that out a little bit. So I would say at least start it an hour after everybody gets off of work just to give them time, traffic to get there, all that kind of stuff. Um, so five to eight thirty is generally when I, when I do my events. And then next you want to pick a venue. So picking a venue is, is a real tricky part. 
I will tell you that I don't pay for any venues that I host my events at. Okay. And you don't need to be as adventurous unless you have like a million past clients to where you need to rent out a whole venue. If you can just get a bar area or a private room, that'll do. Okay. Again, I choose to do these on a day of the week. So like Wednesday or Thursday. And, and the reason is, is because it's not the weekend. Most times they're not going to charge you, you know, a fee because you're not taking away anything. And then I tend to go for like a slower restaurant. Um, so some, somewhere that's, that's nice, classy, maybe a new place that, that people, I mean, that just open people aren't really um, in there a lot. So that way it's a lot easier for you to, you know, pretty much call the shots because you're bringing in more business than, than they would have that, that night. Okay. Um, once you do that, you have all the information that you, you need to, um, go ahead and start inviting people. So we're going to start with a Facebook invite. So if you're friends with any of your past clients or referral partners, set up that Facebook invite and add them to that invite. This is not something to where you're just going to invite your whole friends list. Do not do that. Okay, even if you only have 10 of your past clients on Facebook, that's okay because we have other ways of inviting the others. Um, so set up that um, Facebook invite. The reason why you wanna do that is because it allows you to do quick updates. Mm -hmm. um, it allows you to stay top of mind with them. Remember, we're starting this six to eight weeks. So we're not just gonna send this one invite and be done. We're gonna have to stay in front of them. Um, once you set up that Facebook invite, um, invite your past clients there. You can create a nice little header on Canva or something for free, make it personalized, put all the information on it, just go balls to the wall with it. And then you're going to decide what um, professionals, so re referral partners, or if you want um, just like sponsorship tables or vendors, whatever, decide on, on that. Now here's how I go about that. Like I said, I don't like to pay for these events. Um, I do, I do put in a little money, but we don't do a lot because um, we tend to refer out a lot of business, all right? So I'm referring out to, to mortgage brokers, I'm referring out to insurance agents, inspectors, all that kind of stuff. So I don't really ask a lot of these people, but to participate in my client engagement events, whatever those are, my holiday parties, my um, happy hours, all that kind of stuff, this is their time to participate in there. So what happens is they're the ones splitting the bill for this. All right. Now we're not, we're not buying tables and getting bottle service or anything. Yeah. So it's not that expensive, but it's, it's not even a hard sell. It's like, Hey, such and such. Um, we have probably around 20 clients that we worked on together. They're going to be at this event and I need you to help sponsor it. You know, simple as that. If anybody won't do that with you, they don't need to be a referral partner of yours. Agreed. All right. Simple as that. Um, so somebody had asked me before when I was given this presentation in, in the past and they were saying, oh, well, I'm, I'm nervous about asking them and I don't know how to approach them and this and that. And again, if, 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 if you have any of those types of feelings with somebody who you send a lot of business to, they're not the right referral partner for you. And that's a whole separate subject on referral partners, but yeah, I just got to say that. Um, next, it's going to be your marketing plan. So I'm going to break down the uh, marketing plan through this, but it's a good idea to go ahead and set yourself up like a little checklist. So that way you can just keep things organized. Um, you're going to make a flyer or a PDF. This is our flyer and it's super simple. Make sure you can see it. Yeah, yeah. And we um, print these on like, either colored paper or like resume type of paper. Again, not salesy, it's, it's just giving the information. This is our flyer and we actually mail these. We mail these to each person. And um, yeah, it, it, it gives all the information about the event. It just says, please join us for cocktails and um, in appreciation of your continual support at the place on this day from this time to this time. Give them the address. So that's our flyer. We mail those out to everybody, okay? Then after they've received them, so typically around four to five days later, 
will call them to to gauge that interest even though we we have rsvp down there to our email address everybody doesn't do that yeah. so we still call them hey did you get our invitation um you know we would love to have you there you're one of our favorite people yada 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 um the cool thing about making that, that phone call is you're going to get a lot of people who aren't going to be able to attend and know you've created a touch point, even with just calling them saying how you miss them and want to see them. Like you, yeah. you, you've made that impression, you know? Um, so when you are calling, start that RSVP list, put your yeses down, put your maybes down and cross out the people who can't come. And then if you're going to be doing any giveaways as far as like, team stuff or just swag bags cups pins all that kind of stuff you want to go ahead and place that order so that you have it in time all right so those are all the things that you're going to be doing in that initial planning so again those those six to eight weeks anything you want to add to that does that make sense no i think that makes sense and here's one one quick question i have is you know if you're doing this you know i kind of alluded to the cocktails and drinks and things like that when you do the sponsorships, are you typically doing like, you know, open, you know, free drinks from set time to set time? Or what sort of is the, the process there with people who are sponsoring it? And then are they covering everything or, you know, what's sort of the gig there? Yeah, yeah. So, so we have drink tickets and we'll typically give them two drink tickets. Yeah. Um, we let them have drinks the whole time. Now, I mean, this is just a little secret between us and the industry. If somebody <laughs> wants another one, I don't deny them one, you know. Of course. There's, there's, there's those clients that will literally come out and just have one just to, to, have, to have it. There are some that are going to have two and say, okay, well, that's all we get, and they won't ask me anymore. But then, you know, there's always those ones that are always. like, <laughs> they're going to stay after. They're going to, you know. So Where's the rest I at? I don't really limit anybody. But we do have that, like, cutoff time to where like hey last call get it in all that kind of stuff um how the how the the bar tab and everything typically works we arrange with the venue what drinks are available to them mm -hmm. so they're normally well drinks and wine and beer and so yeah. with that we can kind of gauge the cost because they'll they'll say all right since you're bringing this party in um all your your well drinks will be x amount of dollars beers will be this and wine will be this and so based on our RSVPs, and, and we do one final check of RSVPs, based on our RSVPs and, you know, how many people is gonna, gonna be there with the two drink ticket maximum, we can kind of gauge ahead of time how much we're gonna be looking at spending. Of course. Um, so it's, it's typically not a big deal. And since these aren't just like huge blowout events, like you can invite 200 past clients and, Half of them will probably tell you maybe, and then maybe like 75% to 50% of those people will actually show up. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of one of those things, but we're not spending thousands of dollars on, on these events. Like it just doesn't go down like that. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, yeah, definitely, man. That makes, no, that makes complete sense. A hundred percent, you know, nailed it. So. Okay, cool. So moving right along three weeks, pr three weeks prior, um, we're going to send an email invite. So this invite we're going to do through, through one of those services. Um, I recommend Punchbowl. So Punchbowl is a service that lets you send out email invites and, you know, it makes them all yeah. flashy and they can That's RCP awesome. on there, you know, cause some, cause some people like that. Yeah, and man. so, um, we send out email invites. So just to recap, we've done Facebook, we've done that phone call, we've sent one in the mail and now we're sending an email invite. All right. Next, um, depending on what type of event you want to have and if there's a theme to your event, if you're going to have a speaker, you want to go ahead and get their outline and what they're going to talk about. Um, make a list of giveaways for the event. So whatever giveaways you're going to you're going to have and I'm going to get into giveaways in just a second. But whatever giveaways you want to have, go ahead and make that list for those and then schedule your photographer. Now, here's the thing. Mm. You must have a photographer at this event. Yeah. I don't care if you just get a friend to hold your iPhone and take pictures. You must have a photographer. This is going to be your social proof, okay? This is going to pack your events for the future. 
when you put these images out on Facebook, had a great client appreciation event last night, and people see how much fun all of these past clients are having. For one, I want to become a past client. I want to, yeah. I want to attend your event. You know, Straight so down. make sure that you have a photographer. You don't have to spend a lot of money on, on them. They don't have to be professional, but somebody needs to take pictures. Okay, um, that's the stuff that you're going to do three weeks. Next, we have one week prior. So one week prior, we're going to send out that final email blast. We're going to call the maybes and see if they can make it. So anybody who said maybe on Facebook, anybody who said maybe when you did that first initial um, phone call, you want to go ahead and call them to see if they can truly make it. Tell them that you're finalizing the list. You need to know how much food to order. You know, everybody says that. that line. Of course. So, um, so you want to call those and make sure that they can make it. And then if there's anything that you're, you're low on, you need to go ahead and place that order. So these are going to be your business cards, your brochures, anything that you want to have information wise. Now do not have a whole table set up with just founders group marketing material. Why you should buy a home yeah. versus buying like, like this isn't that type of party. But if there's something that you want to have there, maybe a new program y'all are offering or just at the minimum business cards and you know, you just want to make sure that you have a lot of those. Confirm your um, sponsors. This is the time where you can give them that um, final head count. And, and, and this is also the time to where, let's just say your, your final head count equals out to maybe like $500. You can decide if you want each, I mean, if you want one sponsor to, you know, just do that whole bill or if you want to split it up. I typically will only have one sponsor at my events since I do them once a quarter, instead of trying to have everybody there, um, yeah. we just have one of them per, for, for each one. Um, again, those photos help out with confirming your sponsorship. Hey, this is our last event. Well, you know, of course. Our turnout typically. Um, and then if you're going to have any vendors, go ahead and confirm them. I don't have vendors, but um, if you, let's just say that you have one of these and you don't have it at a restaurant and you have it in, your backyard or at your condo building, then your vendor may be like the hot dog person or the snow cone maker. Like that's what I mean by like vendors. Yeah. So um, confirm any of those. Next three days prior, you're gonna go ahead and put together your your list. You can you can print it out. You can create a sign in sheet. Whatever you want to do. Any take home bags that you're going to have, go ahead and put those together. Um, Confirm with the restaurant your menu and your attendance. As far as menu goes, I don't order a bunch of food. I do order appetizers. Mm -hmm. And what, what tends to work out really well for this, most restaurants have like some type of platter with just a bunch of different appetizers. Yeah. And so what I'll do is I'll just order those. And luckily the agreement that we've made with them is that, hey, we know that we can at least clear four of these, okay? So we're gonna order four, you can go ahead and, and prepare four. And as you see them getting low, and as you bring, you know, bring them out and see people eating them, then just put orders in two at a time. You know, so that's the arrangement that we typically make for them. To be honest with you though, they don't, I mean, since it's like appetizer and just hors d'oeuvres, they don't, they don't typically eat like it's dinner time. Of so, course. So <laughs> yeah. you don't have to get a lot of these. And it doesn't really cost a lot. But I do like to com confirm with them the menu, the drink menu, and the attendance. Um, this is also a good time to bring up the, the drink tickets and everything. And you're going to print your um, sign-in sheets. So have a, have a sign-in sheet. You want to get everybody's name, even if they're a guest, just to be able to um, sign in. All right. Next, day of the event. So, so now we are getting into... Um, more, more so the hosting the event. So we just talked about filling the event by sending all those reminders and all that kind of stuff. We talked about the um, first topic, planning the event. So now we're gonna actually get into hosting the event. So text your RSVPs that day, or you can use something like Slidow and send them a voicemail. And Slidow is really awesome because you can um, do what's called a broadcast to where you just put all the, the, the numbers in one little queue, record the voicemail from your phone and click a button and it'll send it out to their voicemails. 
So their phone won't ring, but they'll get a notification that says that they have a new voicemail. And it's simply just me saying, hey, excited to see you tonight. We're gonna start you know, at this time and go until this time. Um, it should, should be super fun. Quick little voicemail. Um, put your event signs out. So if you're gonna have signs at the actual restaurant, I don't typically do this because, I mean, it's not necessary. The, the hostess will tell them where y'all are. And then set up at the event. My setup is super simple. We just put a few business cards on each table and we put some pins on each table. That's about it. And then we're gonna host the actual event. Now, the day after, the day after is super important because you need to discuss the event. You need to discuss it with your team, with everybody that was involved, with your referral partners, the good, the bad, and the ugly. What can make it better? What do we want to do? What did we, we think of it? Get good feedback, all right? You want to write and mail thank you notes to the people who actually attended. It makes them feel special, all right? Follow up with the referrals that you received to set up a, a coffee meeting or a lunch, whatever and then engage in a follow-up program with your actual attendees. Now, let me talk more so just right quick about during the event, so about mm -hmm. hosting the event, all right? There's three things that I do during the event that I feel like makes them super successful. And one of them is I make sure that I'm mingling with everybody, all right? I use a, I use a, a simple script and it just talks about four things. It talks about their family, their occupation, recreation, anything that they're doing, you know, for fun, and then dreams, things that they want to do in the, in the future. Same thing I talk about with each and every person. And I just rotate and rotate and rotate. The cool thing about this is that they know that you're the host. And so they know that you have to go and mingle with everybody. They're not trying to have a two-hour conversation. So it's super cool. But what that allows me to do, it allows me to get some intel on them because the next thing that I do during the event, I introduce and refer. So, so I get different clients talking to each other. You know, oh, y'all are going to um, Disney. This is Jalen, for example, her and her family, they just got back from, from Disney. You know, maybe she can share some, some tips, bam. And now they're, they're talking. And so you have all these people talking and I'm introducing referral partners, like people who I'm trying to get to send me business. I'm introducing those to my past clients and just creating the best atmosphere ever for everybody, you know? Awesome. And then the last thing we do is we play a game during the event. And, and this is how we get the, the referrals. This is how I was able to pull 38 referrals out of this one event, all right? So one of, the, one of the, the, the giveaways and prizes that I do, I get those like Visa gift cards or American Express gift cards. I spend $100 on, on, on gift cards, okay? I'll get a $50 one and two $25 ones, all right? And so those are my first, second, and, and third place prizes, okay? And the game we play, it's kind of a referral game where I give everybody two minutes to write down as many names and phone numbers from their phone book of anybody who they think could want to buy, sell, or lease, or do anything in real estate within the next 12 months, all right? Anybody who they've maybe heard something from or anybody who they're trying to push into, into buying or whatever it is, you have two minutes to write down as many people as you can. This is what our actual sheets look like. Oh, cool. Super basic, all right? And it's just name on one side, phone number on, on the other side. And I bring a lot of these because they can fill out as many as they want. Typically, how it'll go, though, you'll have like one or two people that, that just go balls to the wall <laughs> and fill up like a sheet and a half, you know. And then you'll have other people who, who may just put down three names. And then you'll, you know, maybe just have somebody who may just put down one name. But all of these are names and phone numbers, you know. So once the two minutes is up, and it's, it's so funny because you'll literally see people sitting there like looking through their um, yeah. phone like, like they're filling out a job application. It's so That's funny. Amazing. Uh, and, and so once the two minutes is up, we make everybody raise their um, papers up. And then I start doing it like an auction to where once I hit a number higher than what you have, then put your paper down. So like I'll start off with like who has two names? who has five, <laughs> seven, 10, you know, and then you'll like get to around like 12 and 15 and then, you know, 
you'll notice that there's maybe only like one or two, two people holding their hands up. But you just keep mental note of that because those are your first, second, and third place. And then you just collect all of them, you know, and those are all warm referrals for you. That and is absolutely genius, man. How we do it, man. <laughs> you know? Now I know why you're crushing it out there. And it's, and, and it's awesome because um, now it's like people look forward to, the, to this game. And, and we actually have like decent prizes. I mean, spending a hundred bucks on 38 warm referrals. I mean, that's, that's, that's awesome. Because now when you call these, these people, guess what? Hey, such and such gave me your name and number. They said you could possibly, I mean, it's, it's such a different conversation. You know, 100%. yeah, they gave it to me last night. Oh, they yeah. were talking about me yesterday. Like it's, it's, it's such a different conversation. And so that's the game that we play. That's how we do our events, literally from planning to hosting the event. And that's how we're able to pull referrals four times a year. It's literally just like refilling the pipeline Wow! every single time. That's insane, man. That's like the coolest game. Wow. Like I'm not lost <laughs> words, man. That's so cool. It's, you know, I love that you do that because I find that's what a lot of people struggle with is I've seen many friends host, you know, the collaborative events where they bring their lawyer inspector, blah, blah, blah. And they come away almost empty handed because they simply just wait for someone to voluntarily fill out a sign in sheet and they hope that they're going to bring a friend, but they don't get their contact info. And, you know, they, they were missing that final link to get something out of it. And right. you just waved the magic wand and provided that link, man. And, you know, I think it's important that you do have that script too, where you talk about the four touch points. I know people like Tom Ferry talk about, you know, going into the recreation and dreams and things like that so that you can be effective with it and efficient because, you know, sometimes you, you are drawn to gravitate towards certain people and talk with them for the whole event. And if you don't mingle, Again, you're not making the most of it. So that's that's amazing advice, brother. Yeah. And I mean, I'll I'll just be be honest. I'm not a big like fluffy person, you know. I'm not a big small talk person. I'm more so like, why are we here? What are we gonna talk about? Let's get to the point, you know. Don't yeah. even ask me how my day is. Yeah. Um, like like I'm just I'm just that type of person. So so this is this is something that actually I can do because I have, I have a mission with it. I have a goal with it. Yep. The reason why I use this same script is because my goal is to connect people in that, in that room. So it's like, I need to make sure that I talk to everybody to see what's going on with them. Because for one, I want to keep them engaged during the whole event. Remember, this is like a two and a half hour event. And so I want to keep them engaged during the whole event. And it's like, once they've talked to me, if I don't get them talking to somebody else, then they're pretty much gonna gonna feel done, or they're gonna be sitting in a corner, or they're not gonna be feeling included. So I literally make it my mission to figure out what's going on with everybody, so that I can make these connections during the event, keep people engaged, keep people having fun, making new friends, all that kind of stuff. That's fantastic, man, and that's you know that's the best way to do it. I guess I, I do have one question, you know. For anybody that's looking to do this, and of course, you know, Jason just gave you the step-by-step -step rule book, so you better start doing this. Um, is there any obstacles or is there any, you know, I guess, things that didn't go right in any of your events that you can be, you can remind people of, you know, in order to avoid? Because certainly, you know, you've done so many now. Is there anything that maybe didn't go as planned or that you should watch out for if you start to include these in, in your business plan? Yeah, I mean, something that that I definitely avoid now, and and it really comes down to like choosing the venue and and the location for the event. Um, something that I didn't con consider because at first it was just more so about like, oh, I want to make it at like a popular place that's yeah. like central, that is cool, the the new hip place to go, and I didn't take into account that like you know, for one, not all of my clients were centrally located. Some were up north, some were down south. And I'm having this event at six o'clock in the middle of the week in rush hour traffic, you know, and and that severely hurt my attendance. And and so now I, I, I take that into consideration a lot more because it's like, yeah, this is a happening spot. So 
everybody's trying to, I'm trying to go there and they're already popular and you know, it just wasn't a good look. Parking is an issue. So yeah. taking all those things into consideration, because I even know how I am. Like when I receive invitations to, to things, like I sit there and I think about all that. Oh no, I don't like to go to that place because there's like nowhere to park or their Straight family up. sucks or of course. Know, whatever. So, so really taking that stuff into consideration. Next, it is definitely, you want to make sure that you're not drinking a lot. Um, maybe two drinks maximum if you have to drink but don't don't get wasted at at your events like i know these could be like a live time and 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 a lot of fun but you know just try to hold off on on that um next it's it, it's really important to make all these touch points that that i did because i really noticed that when i didn't you know, yeah, I invited people in more than enough time. And then by the time the event came, it was like, oh, I forgot about that. And, you know, oh, yeah, you did. Something came up or, you know, whatever it was. So it's 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 really important that you do all those touch points. And even though it may seem excessive, it's not. That's just something in our head because you have to think about it. Um, I wasn't doing the same thing each and every time. One time was Facebook, another time was the mail, then it was through email, then it was a voicemail, then it was a phone call. People were seeing things different ways. You know, everybody's not on Facebook still goes a long way. It, 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 it remains fresh to them. This is how we're able to get so many people at our events, you know, because we're just, we're just reaching out, you know. Um, those, those are kind of the big things that I would say. I know the, the, the major thing that stops a lot of people from doing this is they don't feel like they have enough people. Um, yeah. You know, they don't, they don't feel like, I have enough past clients or, you know, I, I haven't helped enough people, but literally one is enough. One is enough. And it, you don't, you don't have to make it a, a huge event, but one person is enough for you to start engaging outside of y'all's real estate transactions. If you only have four people, five people, and you want to just do a dinner, that's fine. You know, like, I have a lot of people, so this makes more sense for me. <laughs> but if you just want to do like a little bowling night, if you just want to do a movie, like I know, I know one um, one of my my buddies, he just buys movie tickets. Like he yeah. buys movie tickets and invites the family out, and they. Oh, there we are. That's amazing, oh, man. Yeah, yeah, sorry. That's uh, that's crazy, man. You know, one thing that we have to touch on is just the fact that, as you alluded to, it's just a matter of getting started because a lot of people are going to overcomplicate it. They're going to say, you know, I don't have this big database and how am I going to get started? And, you know, you're never going to get a big database if you don't get started because you need to include things like this in your business plan. So, Great, man. I can't believe it. You know, this is probably the first time I've, I've collaborated with someone where it was just like bombs dropped the whole time. And, and this is, you know, Jason just gave you guys the playbook, the rule book of everything you need to do to implement this into your own city. So I think it's, you know, it's extremely admirable when someone like you comes on and shares one of their secrets about how they get business. And that's why I absolutely love what you're doing, man. So you know, there's not much else to say before we go, man. Is there any, you know, final words that uh, you want to leave with the people? No, I mean, I, I, I really enjoyed being here, you know, and I, I, I like to share a lot of knowledge on my channel and, you know, even through my email list. And I mean, there's enough real estate out here for everybody. So it's just exactly what I say, man. You know, there's plenty to go around. And if we as 
you know, value providers and content creators, if we can help elevate the service and elevate the quality of agents, then we're doing our job. So what I will do guys is I will be linking Chasen's YouTube channel. Um, you know, some of the offerings that he has and some of the epic stuff, because again, you guys want to check out this lead gen book. You guys want to check out the stuff that he has to offer and sign up for his email list because you want to stay up to date with some of the cool things he's doing because he's an innovator, he's a creator, and he's always pushing the boundaries of this industry. So Jason, brother, thank you so much. I'm super excited to see, you know, what's coming next from you watching your YouTube channel explode. Um, and also make sure you follow his Instagram guys, cause this guy's living the best life. And, uh, you know, maybe, we'll, maybe we'll be seeing a supercar on there at some point soon. Right. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate it. Thank you. There you go, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. As always, please make sure you like and subscribe. Go check out his stuff. You won't regret it. And make sure you start implementing this into your business tomorrow. Thanks again, as always. And we'll see you next time. Cheers.